Ladies and gentlemen, let's come now to our first ITB CEO interview. The crown jewel of the Booking Holdings, Booking.com is a global juggernaut in hotel distribution. Meet its CEO Jillian Tanz in an intimate conversation with Focus Right founder Philip Wolf. Booking.com is the ultimate customer acquisition machine, delivering value to travelers on all corners of the earth. Despite various initiatives to drive direct bookings, Booking.com remains an important component of our industry's ecosystem. This session will afford attendees valuable insights to enhance their own strategies. Before we start our interviews, ladies and gentlemen, let's do our live voting. Uh, as you might know, we have installed live voting system here in this hall. You have remote control devices uh, attached to your seats. If you take them, you have the chance to answer or give an answer to the following question. Can we have the question, please? The question is, booking has developed rapidly so far. How will things continue in the future? Option one is, booking has passed its peak. New competitors will develop more dynamically. Or option two, booking will continue to develop very dynamically and assert itself successfully. Ladies and gentlemen, please vote now. Okay, two-thirds have a very optimistic view. Booking will continue to develop very dynamically and assert itself successfully. That's interesting. We will hear how Booking will do this. Now we have an interviewer. This is Philip Wolf. Philip Wolf is globally well-known travel guru. He is the founder of Focus Ride, an independent travel, tourism, and hospitality research firm specializing in the impact of technology and innovation. Since 1994, Philip grew focus right into a worldwide known research authority and global brand in our industry. Today he serves as board director on three continents, including two listed companies. And last but not least, it's worth mentioning that ITB and Philip Wolf, respectively, focus right now has a more than 10 year fruitful collaboration. Philip, thanks for that. Also here from my side. Okay, Philip, we agreed upon you introduce Jillian Tanz. Please, Jillian, Philip, stage is yours. Thank you. It's true, I've said it before and I'll say it again, our next speaker does have a dream job. How many of you have a dream job? Huh? Not too many. She joined this Amsterdam startup in 2002. 2002 as employee number five or seven, I'll have to ask, one of those two. And she has held just about every single job in that company since she joined, culminating in her appointment as CEO about two years ago. During her story tenure, the company has grown to over 17,000 employees. I guess it doesn't matter if you were fifth or seventh operating in over 228 countries and territories and conducting business in 43 languages. If you can imagine this, the company has booked, since its inception, over one billion room nights since the beginning. In fact, this company is part of one of the largest e-commerce com companies in the world. And if you follow the stock market like I do, it closed yesterday at a market capitalization of just over US $100 billion. The parent company is Booking Holdings. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president and CEO of Booking.com, Ms. Gillian Tans. Thank you. Welcome, Gillian. Please. Yeah. So I'm dying to know the parent company just changed its name from Priceline Group to Booking Holdings. Was that your idea to make it, you know? <laughs> well, then I would take a lot of credit. But 
No, for, for booking this uh, was uh, a, a great thing that this uh, happened. And uh, I think also for the group, because if you think about booking and the recognition of the booking name, right, all over the world, and uh, I think it made sense at some point that yeah, that would change. I think it's a good move, especially in the US, where it's relatively less, less known. So last year when we were on stage together, Gillian, I think the company did business in 40 languages, and now the statute says 43, so I'm dying to know what the last three, three no, languages are. Uh, it's the same as last same. year. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it's 43, but uh, there's not the languages that we can <laughs> add, unfortunately. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have done so. Yeah. So I, had to do some, I did some stats this morning with uh, Jane Sun of C-Trip. They have 33,000 employees which is incomprehensible, but 17,000 I mentioned, over 228, 1.6 million hotels and apartments, 15,000 affiliates, on and on. So I, I remember once you said, though, that it still feels like a startup when you go to work, and I mean, every year that becomes a bigger and bigger bigger challenge. Does it still feel that way when you go to work? You have your sneakers on, so that helps. <laughs> it's because I need to run fast <laughs> to all these meetings today. But uh, no, it still feels like it's the beginning, right? And yeah. uh, I, I also think, uh, if you think about Booking.com, 21 years ago, we challenged the status quo by asking ourselves, isn't there a better way, right? To think <laughs> about how we can make people's lives easier in finding and booking accommodations. And today, we still keep asking ourselves that question. Yeah. So I guess we should start with uh, just about the hottest topic that everyone talks about. So maybe I, I'll ask if this is true or false. So this is from the uh, recent information uh, article. True or false? The long simmering battle between Airbnb and Booking.com is about to explode. Is that true or false? Well, it's not a very long battle because yeah. uh, we, we were there well, before. Well, if you're a journalist, everyone. you yeah. have to say long battle simmering. Well, but things. it's, um, if you think about the, the category, right, and uh, you see booking has and I said that last year has had apartments in Amsterdam forever, right? So it's not a new segment for us, mm -hmm. but you see customers more and more want to choose these type of accommodations. Uh, through research, we know one out of three customers wants to choose a holiday home or an apartment. So the supply becomes much more important to customers and it keeps growing. And yeah. also that's one of the main reasons that booking is more active into this category and we're in it to win this category. I yeah. mean, that's very obvious. So that's, and, but that's a big, bold statement. I'm not so sure. Did, did you always say that you were in alternative accommodations to well, win? We, or is that we new? are, we are, we offer the breadth of selection, right? In any destination and apartments, holiday homes, bed and breakfast, uh, any accommodation yeah. that is out there, we want to offer to customers. So to support that statement, you recently hired Olivier Gramion, who is a senior, seasoned senior executive with uh, Booking.com. Booking that's a, that's, sorry, with Airbnb, Airbnb and he came over to Booking.com. How did, how did you convince him to leave Airbnb and come to Booking.com? <laughs> Was it well, easy or hard? Well, it's, it, well, if it's easy or not, it's, we always look for the best people, right, to, to, to build these successes. The main part is that we want to make sure we continue to grow this segment as we has been growing, right? Yeah. It's, and I said that before, we don't want to build Airbnb inside of Booking, right? We want to make sure, because Booking has a completely different way of approaching this product, right? Everything is instant bookable. We don't charge customer fees. So there's many differences as well. So we, we wanted to make sure we find the right person to keep growing this segment uh, within booking. You know, when, when did he join? Uh, a few months ago. Three months. So the honeymoon is long, uh, long, long over. And then uh, two days ago it was recently announced that Airbnb just hired a 16-year veteran from uh, Amazon. Yeah. Amazon Greeley to run one of its uh, big businesses. So were you yeah. surprised by that news? Well, yes and no. I think there's a lot of talent at Amazon, right? So, uh, and uh, you see also people at Amazon have been there for a long time that they also move to other places. So, yeah. in that sense, I was not surprised. And I think it's a, it's a great hire. 
So another quote, Brian Chesky, the founder and CEO of Airbnb, recently said, quote, our competition is two companies, Expedia and Booking.com. I'll ask Mark the same question tomorrow. And Brian went on to say, and I'm an extremely excited about what the next 10 years have in store. That's the first time uh, Brian, Airbnb, has pointed to the two big OTAs and said, you're a competitor. So, that, so there, there is something different going on. Yeah. Right now. Well, I think it also has to do with, uh, if you think about Booking.com and the amount of supply in, the, in this category is already passing the million properties. So yeah. you see that that's growing very fast. And uh, also Airbnb, of course, is changing into other categories yeah, as well. Yeah, so it's, it's like going both ways. So yes. the first way is, I did some uh, checking. So Airbnb has a total of four and a half million listings, which is right. enormous. And they're saying now, and some third parties are agreeing, that 2.1, 2 2.2 million of those Airbnb properties are bookable inst instantly. Yeah, so, it could be. Yeah. So that's a, a big change. And in addition to Booking.com getting more into alternative accommodations, in reverse, recently Booking. Uh, Airbnb just announced it was adding a lot of hotels to its platform. So it seems like there's definitely a blurring uh, going on. Yeah. Well, I think, well, I, I mean, for, I can only speak for Booking, but if you see the customer data that we follow, then mm. it makes sense for Booking to uh, expand even more aggressively into this segment. Yeah. But I think, do you, do you think it makes sense? Like, there's a lot of hotel properties in the world that are independents. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I know, probably, I know, I think I know the answer, but it's booking.com that sort of owns a big chunk of that space, concerned about so many of these independent properties also listing with Airbnb. Well, but today you already see that hotels have large distribution networks, right? So yeah. uh, that's already the case today. So if we would have a problem with that, then we would have had this problem for a long time. So I think it's also very healthy that hotels have a, a distribution mix. And uh, it also depends, of course, which source markets uh, companies bring more, uh, more customers from. There's all kind of different dynamics, which... Uh, Gillian, do you think from an independent hotelier's perspective, over time, the economics of selling on an Expedia or a booking or an Airbnb will become closer and closer together? Or do you think there'll be sustainable differences? Well, I think there will be differences, yeah. uh, of course. And uh, you already see that between booking and Expedia today, right? So uh, Expedia has packages today or flights, right? So, uh, yeah. and, and booking uh, doesn't offer that, for instance. So there, there's differences and yeah, the, the future, I don't know, right? So that, that all depends on, on customers, I think, where companies are going to innovate yeah. into. Yeah. It's interesting. So, um, well, I'll get to the other brands in a second. Let's, let's, speaking of hotel chains, can we play the uh, hotel video? I'll stick to that. So. Stop clicking around. Book direct at Hilton.com for the lowest price online. And start playing. Start relaxing. Start loving. Book direct at Hilton.com and start saving. So that so that's that's an old ad. I don't know if they're still running it or I think that I think they are. Mm -hmm. But that that was one year ago. So here you have a major global hotel chain advertising on television and multiple markets. Don't go to an OTA or a travel agent. Go to Hilton.com and book. And what do you think? <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you what do you think of that? Because you sell a lot of Hilton, right? I mean, yeah. they're a partner. Yeah, no, they're they're absolutely a partner, and of yeah. course, but I, I think I, I said that last year as well. I think eventually it's all about customers, right? And if you think about 
customers and how customers travel nowadays and how they use mobile devices more and more, right? We see a booking that customers, they might book the first property, but then travel with the app, right? So you see that customers and technology changes so fast, and that's also, I think, where booking can play an, a, an even bigger role, right? Because right. we're so focused on, 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 on this uh, element. And, um, yeah, I think with, with, with change, they, of course, also try to build their direct business, which uh, I understand. Yeah. And, but booking is still growing very fast. So, uh, and most of the customers that booking delivers to properties are new. And, uh, and therefore, also change need companies like booking, right? To make sure that they get new customers through the door. So uh, it, it will always be a mix, uh, I yeah. think. It's just... It's just odd when you advertise against your partners but you know I'm sure if I asked yeah, Elton, they it, would say it's, it's successful yeah it's it's pretty strange in this industry that this happens because uh, I think if you look in retail in other oh. areas you never see this happening so well, welcome to the travel industry yeah. could, could you imagine if Starbucks ran television ads and uh, telling customers, don't buy Starbucks coffee beans in grocery stores, only come to a Starbucks store. Yeah. It's just unthinkable. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. welcome to the travel, tourism, and hospitality industry, everybody. There we go. So uh, you talked about packaging with Expedia. So uh, Booking.com, part of Booking Holdings now, has some pretty significant sister companies. Agoda in... Um, Southeast Asia focused similar business on hotels, okay. uh, open table and restaurants, one I know very well, rental cars, and Priceline.com uh, in the United States. Am I missing any big ones? I think that, that's it. Who? Kayak. Who am I missing? Did you mention Kayak? Kayak, yeah. yes, sorry about that. <laughs> and the Kayak recently bought Mamondo. Uh, Mamondo. Yes. So, uh, do you. Do you Booking.com has really never had anything to do with airline ticketing or anything like that. Do you think that might ever change one day? Maybe on yeah. the packaging side? Well, I think it will change if we see that customers want Booking to help with this part. We, we, we've learned a lot through data as well as to how important it is to know the price, for instance, of an airline ticket when you, when you, when you decide on where you're going to go for your yeah. trip. And we realize that one third of customers thinks of that before they book the accommodation, one third during they book the accommodation, one third after they book the accommodation. So that's interesting knowledge also for us to see, okay, but how can we then help customers, right? Because they have a certain budget, which both play a role. And uh, so these are areas which we're looking at and, and, and testing. We have now, I'm sure many have seen a bar where we even offer a, a tab with flights, uh, also to learn from uh, our customers interested yeah. in that information, for instance. So uh, there's a lot of exploration, testing, learning to see, yeah. but if we see that customers are booking that are, don't want to book that via booking, then we yeah. wouldn't do it. And it would be an understatement to say booking.com is a data-driven company, wouldn't it? I mean, that's, it's very data, yes. extremely data-driven. I like, would you agree? Yeah. Some, I heard somebody say recently that even though companies say they listen to customers, a lot of times they don't because they don't look at the data and data is the voice of the customers. Yes. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, even if we would do questionnaires with customers, we would still look at what customers are actually doing. Yeah. So, and that's very, very important, even design. And that's quite unique because, uh, and because many companies uh, don't do that, but even design is being uh, tested. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of companies make decisions differently. And I guess I'm in a unique position. I sit in way too many management meetings and board meetings and the senior staff is sitting around and they say, I think this and I think that. And they get a consensus around and based on those opinions, they make a decision. And what do you think about those decisions and businesses based on opinions? Well, I like think it's, it's, it's risky, right? But it d depends a bit on which phase, right? If you need to develop something new, from let's say zero to one, then you, you, you just need to get started, right? You, you cannot test or learn through data. But as soon as you start optimizing or improving your business, then it's very important that you, you constantly think about what, what data do I need to prove that I'm, what I'm doing is actually helping customers. Yeah. So speaking of tests, um, 
a lot of people have heard about A-B testing. Yeah. Some people have not. So I know it's a, a way of life at Booking.com and other But could, could you explain to the audience in simple terms, those who don't understand, what is A-B testing, why is it important, and why does Booking.com conduct so many tests? Yeah. So everything you see in our products, so in our apps or on our website, uh, has been tested, if it's there. And basically, we create two variants. And then we basically test what variant works better for customers. And that's the variant that will, will, will stay. And, so uh, that could be as simple as a booking button being green or red? Everything, yeah. yeah. Everything from a color to a line uh, to an icon to everything you see. And who? Who thinks of these tests? Who thinks uh, all of the, the employees in our product teams, they, they think of this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's great for your culture because we, we really put these decisions as low as possible. Because right. otherwise you can never come up with all of these ideas. And we do over a thousand of these experiments every day. So if every decision needs to come to me, then we wouldn't innovate <laughs> so yeah. much. So that means at any moment in time, yeah. there are 1,000 slightly yep. different versions of booking.com yes and yeah. it's interesting because i often don't even know everything that's being tested but the other day on friday one of our lead designers comes to me and he says well gillian i'm going to do an experiment but i thought i'd run it by you and he shows me the experiment which was a complete blue home page it was a completely blue with just a, a bar in it <laughs> And, um, which sort of Google ask. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, and if people have the right reasons to do this experiment as to what they want to learn from it, then uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. But it's extreme sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And some tests are very basic or incremental, like yeah. the examples we just said. But some of them like, are very innovative and yeah. Experimental and, and new concepts. So, how do you handle those different types of tests? Are they different teams, different processes? Well, at Booking, we have uh, we call new de new product development, and we have uh, the the core optimization. Okay. And a new product development really works on our experiences experiences product, for instance. So, we already have in over 30 cities attractions. We have, uh, uh, we are working on the getting information for, of food to customers, uh, transportation. So uh, all of these elements you will find in new product development. Yeah. But even if we create new marketing tools, right, like we've done with refer friend program or incentives, in the beginning we will create these in a new product development yeah. environment. Yeah. And just to be clear with everyone, product development in e-commerce is not supplier relations or inventory, no. it's the user yeah, experience. It's everything to do with customers. Yeah. Yeah. How, ma how many in the audience uh, use the word product to mean inventory, clap if it is, if you use the word product to mean basically the supply and inventory you sell? Nobody. Do you believe that? I don't believe that. Okay. I believe it. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't clear with the question. So out of 17,000 employees, Yes. How many are product specialists of different types? So we have uh, close to 2,000 people wow. that uh, work on our products. So 2,000 people obsessing about mobile websites, all yeah. other different yeah. interfaces and experiences. And these are all customer-related. Then we still have product teams that work, of course, on, on supply, uh, which is the, the accommodation side, yeah. and uh, within customer service as well, for instance. Yeah. And, and how many software engineers out of the, How many software engineers? Engineers IT? are 1,500. 1,500. Yeah. Wow. That's quite uh, amazing. So uh, recently, Booking.com shifted focus from uh, heavy concentration on online advertising to a little less online advertising and a little more television creative, I, I think. Uh, what was the uh, reasoning for making that shift or exploring that shift and how, how, it is, that, how is that working? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a shift because we're still spending more, right, yeah. in, in, in uh, we say, performance marketing. Uh, but we are learning much more also in, in other type of marketing channels like influencer marketing, like I said, refer friend incentives, 
um, also through Facebook, YouTube, but also we do a lot more campaigns offline. Yeah. And uh, we always, as a company, we always focused a lot on the measurability of the marketing we do. And, uh, and, and also with offline, more and more we're able to measure the success of that. So even how we measure creatives, we measure... And offline campaigns. Yes, yeah, so we, we have different type of creatives, which we will measure against each other, plus the one that we have aired at that moment. So we always want to make sure that whatever we put next is better than the one before. And then we measure, at time a spot airs, we really measure, okay, within a certain time frame, uh, what spikes do we see in, in visitation, but also how many people do we see have, have booked. So we really try to bring it back to... Uh, to, to, to bookings and um, so that's the models that we have running behind that. So in the short term I guess it's a little easier because of the spikes and the visits but the more and more creative and brand focused you get and the less transactional yeah. focused there's a mid to longer term effect and do you still measure how do you measure that or well, today we don't measure that. That's oh. very difficult. And uh, you see, performance marketing is easier to measure because there the intent is really clear. Right. So you know that people have an intent to travel. Uh, if you look at other type of channels, even on Facebook or YouTube, that intent is less clear. So it's more complicated to, yeah. to get the measurement right. I should uh, mention, if anybody in the audience has a question, please raise your hand. I think there's some microphones or come up or somehow and uh, we're happy to take it, but other than that, I still have plenty, uh, plenty more questions. Do you, how does advertising on Instagram work, or do you know? Is that how, how does that work? Six, six, yes. Yes. Yeah, so do stories. We do advertising yeah. on Instagram, but that's still very small. So yeah. it's very small. What you see growing now, you see what we, the work we're doing on Facebook or YouTube is 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 more uh, relevant. So, uh, speaking of uh, brand awareness campaigns, I know you yeah. tested a lot of different yes. ones, but I want to show the audience, if I understand, one that yes. sort of wound up being the more... If we can play the booking video. So that, uh, what create? Tell you what, you can't get what uh, creative agency did you use for this campaign? Well, these are all employees of Booking. So these, uh, this is a material that we we've made together with our employees, which and we tested this in many countries, and it actually was the winning campaign. And we have more variations of material that our employees actually made. Yeah, and it's quite. I mean, I think if you see this, you really understand booking, right? Because what we do is every day in every way, we want to make it easier for people to get out there and explore the world. Yeah. And you see that these experiences really um, shape people's perspective and, and travel is impacting people, right? Yeah. And it can be remembered for a long time. I guess that helped the marketing budget when user ge yeah. self generated. It's quite funny. So. We, we actually did a bet when the first one came out. If we would get to, I think it was one million views, <laughs> then uh, we would jump into the canal of Amsterdam, which uh, unfortunately uh, I had to jump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like that uh, Apple has this incredibly successful campaign with a selfie. Yeah. Photographs and the yeah. customers. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it's it's real, right? Yeah. And that's what people uh, want to see. Okay. And I think everybody can recall a moment when travel has impacted you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for playing that. So, changing gears, I just. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I just saw uh, a startup company, I think it's called Simple Booking. Not a very original name, but uh, my understanding. It's nice if it can be done simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, have a booking engine and a booking path uh, for ho hotels that accepts Bitcoin as a form of mm. payment. Uh, what is Booking.com doing, experimenting in terms of alternate forms of payment, Bitcoin, uh, cryptocurrencies, and things like that? Yeah, so we, we don't do anything in, in Bitcoin today, but Booking is uh, doing a lot on the payment front, right? On, on the element for customers, so how can we make sure that we offer more payment methods and make it easier for customers uh, uh, to, to pay, and also for properties, because many properties cannot deal with all these currencies, payment methods, especially if you think about the, the booking yeah. home property. So uh, we are investing a lot in, in payments and building out a, a payment platform. Yeah. Do you think Bitcoin will become one of many? I don't know. But you're uh, testing it? Or well, we will test, but we'll I think let's first get uh, the other payment and facilities done. <laughs> yeah. We had uh, Jane's son on stage with me this morning, where Alipay as a form of payment is yeah, a way correct. of life. Yeah, correct. Is that the case in yes. certain countries? Yeah, no. Book? And in, in China, of course, we do test uh, a lot with these type of, of payment methods, yeah. yes. It's very important with payments that you adapt to local markets, right? And how customers are used to pay or how they're able to pay. And yeah. as in many countries, a lot of customers don't have credit cards, so... Uh, yeah. 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 It's interesting. I think when I was at ITB in Shanghai in May, I had lunch with the head of the Finland Tourism Board. And he said they've been trying things for years to get Chinese tourists, changing menus, changing hotels, tours. Yeah. And then they got the retailers and restaurants to accept Alipay and yeah, uh, it, it, uh, yeah. it does spike. So it's uh, qu quite amazing. So um, your, your uh, boss now is uh, Glenn Fogel, somebody I've known for a very long time. So I guess he's been your boss for a little over a year. Yeah. Has that re really been any different? I mean, you've known him a long time because he was there, yeah. but... Yeah, I think it's it's great, right? So I know I've known Glenn for a long time, mm. uh, and it's nice that we're able to work even closer together now. He's somebody that knows the industry really well, probably probably the one that knows the most of the people that I know, and uh, I think it's very promising what that can bring to the group. Yeah, great great guy. So uh, we just ended uh, earnings se season for the most most part. And there were a lot of uh, mixed uh, results in travel especially, but I think all sectors. But once again, booking holdings had a very strong... Do you think this is uh, more of a macro issue or something specific about different travel companies? Or yeah. I know you're not an analyst, but... Yeah. Series analyst, but... Yeah, so I, I can only talk about booking rights and uh, because I don't know, of course, what happens at other businesses or, or decisions they make, right, in their businesses. But uh, yeah, booking had a good year last year, and uh, but still also for booking, uh, like I said, there's still a lot of work to do if you think about uh, customer segments, different type of properties, uh, different type of markets where we are still expanding, uh, expanding in. And then if you think about booking, that we're building out the whole global experience market marketplace, um, that is also something that uh, hopefully uh, deliver an even better experience to customers. Yeah. Going to the uh, opening polling yeah. question about is Booking.com still have a lot of gas in the tank or is its best years behind them? So what, as, as, as CEO of this incredibly influential company in travel and tourism, what kinds of things keep you awake at night as the marketplace evolves, technology, customers, competition, other than, other than keeping a great staff? Because I know that keeps everyone yeah. awake. Yeah. Well, I think, I think 
what keeps me up the most is that as a company you're very successful, but you need to make sure you stay agile and that you also challenge the status quo because the future will look different. If you mm. see how fast technology is changing, uh, if also booking a company does not ado adopt to that or is willing to even change part of the business model because that's better for customers or we don't follow customer data anymore, then that's also for booking, of course, a risk. Yeah. So. Uh, and that's something that we are very actively thinking about and investing. And, uh, and we've always done that, right? When mobile game was also a big moment for booking. Right. Can we be Shift successful in mobile? mobile? And when do you make that investment, right? And, uh, but uh, you need to constantly make sure that you change and, and you adopt yourself. And uh, I think that's also so important why a booking we've built a yeah. very agile organization. And would you say artificial intelligence and machine learning are big examples yes. of, of well, now it's everybody's thinking about it at the company yeah i think for booking as a data company every booking already touches machine learning in booking yeah. so that's for us is not new or that won't change in the future that's all already a reality today or it, so within our business every customer somehow is touched yeah. by machine learning yeah, and absolutely and artificial. yeah and well, then if you think about artificial intelligence I mean, in a few years, I think 50% of bookings will touch that technology as well, right? So, uh, and that's and why we're making a lot yeah. of investments in that space. And Gillian, is a big part of that finally able to offer, because everyone's talking about personalization for yeah. years. Yeah, personalization is an important one. If you think about, well, I always give an example, if you want to find the best property in Rome, yeah. where you have 8,000 choices, how, how are you going to help customers? There is no <laughs> such thing as the best property in Rome. <laughs> no, but... Only uh, for me or you, right? Yeah, yeah correct. But uh, no, but that's... And you, it, but you see it everywhere, even in translations or customer service, the way we route customers, it's, it's everywhere in our business, uh, how we display pictures, uh, you know, you name it. Yeah. So if we took 10 random people from the audience and put up 10 screens and they go to booking.com, uh, similar searches, but they would see different things, perhaps. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that depends, of course, uh, um, what settings uh, they use, but uh, yeah, it could be that they see different things. Yeah. Yeah. It also depends, right, if you're a family or you look with children or if you're looking for a business trip, that can change as well. Right. And what about the chatbot that, because yeah. you hear a lot of mixed reviews about chatbots. Some of it has to do with this obsession in the travel industry that if it doesn't result in transactions, I don't invest in it. But how has the chatbot worked for Booking.com? Yeah. So we, we have uh, currently in two places. So the first place is the booking assistant, mm. which is a chatbot. It's really to make sure that customers get answers quicker. And uh, there you see we're already able via the bot to help customers on 13 topics uh, in the English language today. So 30% of English speaking customers already interact uh, with this bot. And on the other side, you see that we're testing a lot more in also through messaging that we can make sure that we people can book there and and there that's also going via bo a bot if if i say well i want to go to paris yes. that eventually a bot will help me find the right accommodation in paris so do you think for the in the near term that bots will be more helpful on support and assistance and information than actually... Well, I think it's both. Both. Yeah, I think it's both. I think AI can really change, again, the way uh, people search and book and, and even uh, experience destinations. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, to close, I'd like to put you, put you on the spot a little bit. So, we talked about Glenn Foldo, and he was a career corporate development M&A uh, guy, I'm, I'm sure he can't get that out of his blood, but if he asked you to put on an M&A hat, mergers and acquisitions hat, and you could make a recommendation to Glenn or the board of directors on uh, some type, I'm not, I don't mean naming a brand, but what, what kind of acquisition would you like to see either inside of booking.com or for the parent company, something big and 
I old. think Amazon is a great company. We could learn a lot from them. Yeah. But, uh, I don't think that that's going to happen anytime soon. But uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think I mean we look at most companies out there. And for me, it's very important that eventually it's down to culture, right? Uh, mm. Because that often I see is the chance of success, right? If, if there's a, a cultural mix or even how you think about developing products for customers. And, uh, but there's great things happening. I really like the bike sharing companies in China, oh. for instance, as a Dutch person. The I, I dream money. about booking blue bikes yeah. everywhere. The amount <laughs> of capital raised in bike sharing in China yeah, is it's amazing. It's crazy, and Glenn ha won't be happy if I put that forward because they ever, don't make any money. But <laughs> have you ever met Jeff Bezos? No, I never met him. I would no. love to, too. That yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe we'll figure out how to do that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Gillian Tans, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Philip. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.